all good things must come to an end. And so we are at the end of the full circle. It's the last Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the year, of the ordinary time. And just like all times, in all journeys of life, there is a point you begin and there's a point you end. Birth, death, the end has come. And usually when I look at this whole experience of end, especially at this time of the year, most corporate companies and most schools or institutions will have what is called assessments. They will have evaluations. Some will have their appraisals done during this period. The seminary is having the assessments now, you know, for the next intake. And it's a period when you sit down and you evaluate what's happening and what's not happening in life. What's the fruit? It's like when you go up to the tree and you see is the fruit bearing tree. In the church, in the Catholic church, we also have this. Do you know what we call this? It's called Judgment Day. It's called Judgment Day. And that's the gospel today. It's a Judgment Day. It's a bit scary to think about it. It's a day where we speak about the last four things. I've been narrating it for the last couple of weeks. Death, judgment, heaven and hell. And this is the pinnacle, the end of it. And so we are at a point when we look at ourselves and say, have we lived that life that God has entrusted to us? Have we bear fruit, the gift that God has given us? If you want to have the picture of this judgment day, the only way I could look at it is if you have been to Rome. It's on the walls of the 16th chapel. It's the artwork of Michelangelo on the whole wall of the 16th chapel of the judgment day. He depicts it very beautifully. And if you get a moment to just have a glimpse of it, it's beautiful. The separation of the sheep and the goats. Paul to Corinthians tells us at the end of that moment, when the sovereignty of God takes hold of it, he will make that distinction between what is mine and what does not belong to mine. The question is, we ask ourselves, the questions we beg to ask ourselves this morning as we sit at this beautiful celebration is, what's the criteria? What do you think will be the criteria God will look at us when that moment comes? Will he say, Ay, oh, you missed all the Sunday Mass this year? Will that be, to the Sunday school children, you missed the whole load of it. Will that be a, an experience? When was the last I stepped into the church? What is that criteria do you think God would ever look into our eyes on that judgment day? It's in the gospel text today. The least that you have done to one of my brothers and sisters. The least that you have done to one of my brothers and sisters. It's all about human relationships. It's just basically about a human need. It's all about a human relationship. To love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your being, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's all about a relationship. That's the shape, that's the color, that's the very fiber of the end of our life, my dear friends. How we lived in that human relationships. That's the governing point. That's the, everything that we speak about today. It's about our human relationships how we look at the strangers, or how we look at others today. Today, I'm just going to speak about this human relationship a bit, you know. And I'm just going to share with you some of the things that I said with myself this evening. And I, I look at the essence of this relationship of my life today as a priest and how I minister today. The question we ask ourselves today is, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor in this relationship today? Because if you look at the story of the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, when the lawyer, to disconcert Jesus, asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? I'm going to ask you today, in your experience of relationships today, who do you find these people who are in need of that, that, that touch, of that human touch, that human need? Jesus says today, I was hungry and you fed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. Who are these people that you find in your life who are in need of this human touch? 
when I look around my life today, when I sit back and I look back at the, the whole array of, array of people that I've walked with in my life, I call these people whom I've reached to as strangers. People who are unexpectedly walking into my life. I call them the strangers on the road. They are the strangers on the road. They're the people that you just encounter every moment of your life. You find them. I call this the unexpected people that you meet. It's not as someone you want to reach out and say, I'm going to help the migrants today. I'm going to reach out to this lonely family. No, it's, it just happened unexpectedly. That's the stranger. We live in a world today where we speak about the culture of walls today. The culture of walls. We all build walls around us today. All the more in this COVID pandemic, there is a whole experience of fear. There's two words that I just want you to sit with. When you see someone, do you sense hostility or do you sense hospitality? Do you sense hostility or do you sense hospitality with people around? When you walk around them, when this distancing is around you, when this mask is around you, how do you find yourselves? Do you look at that stranger before you and, and you ask yourself, could I build a wall now? Could I keep a distance? If you remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man had everything. It was not that he was a bad man. He was blessed. He was tremendously blessed. But he couldn't see beyond the gate. He couldn't step out of the gate. And Lazarus was at the gate. All he had was enough for him. In human social dimensions, we call this indifference. We don't need you. And I don't need you. I have everything I have. I don't need you at all. I'm able to sustain on my own. That's the indifference. And I'm going to give you a beautiful story of hospitality. It's in the book of Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 15. If you get a moment, Abraham was in his little tent in Mamre and he was seated there. Three strangers came. Do you remember the story? The beautiful three strangers came. And Abraham ran out to the strangers and said, Come in, you are hot. It's a hot day. It's tired. Come in. And he ran to the kitchen and told Sarah, Prepare, prepare a meal, Sarah. Get everything ready for the strangers. And in the midst of the conversation, the three strangers looked at Abraham and said, I'm coming back next year. But next year, when I come back, you will have a child. And you know the story was Isaac. By the way, Sarah was laughing when she heard this. She didn't believe it. That's a blessing. And that's the word Jesus says today. Blessed are those. Because when you give it to an unexpected person, you will be blessed. You will be blessed a hundredfold, my dear friends. You will be blessed and blessed a hundredfold. Because you have given that blessing or you have shared your blessing with someone. That's the unexpected people that we meet in life, my dear friends. The strangers that we meet in life. I could go on speaking about it, about the strangers, about how we connect to people. I like the words of St. John of the Cross, a beautiful saying. At the evening of life, we will be judged by love. When everything is finished, in the evening of life, we will be judged by love alone. The capacity of your love to give to someone. And that love is the stranger of the unexpected person. Because sometimes when I finish a Eucharist or when I'm walking out of the parish, someone would run up to me and say, Father, can you give me a blessing? It's my birthday, Father. Can you just bless me, Father? It's my, it's my wedding anniversary with my husband. We all seek blessing. We all seek blessing. But we have found a moment to share that blessing with someone. Have you ever found a moment to give the unexpected moment of life to someone who needs that? Because that blessing will come back, just like Abraham received it. Let us ask the Lord the grace today, my dear friends. We have come to the end. 
it's judgment day. The least that you have done to one of my brothers and sisters, you have done for me. They are out there, my dear friends, the unexpected, the stranger. As we keep our social distancing, as we keep our mask, they stand before us. Let's continue this journey because next week we start with Advent. And it's a whole, whole new beginning of the journey once again. <laughs>